Yeah, so um, Eric, can you tell us a little bit about your, uh, about what you do, who, who you are, and uh, can you introduce to us this concept of a, of a genome? Sure. Uh, so uh, my name is Eric McMillan. I am a licensed American Family Therapist. Uh, I am on my way to being a supervisor as well, so the uh, LMFC supervisor is kind of the next step up. Um, the concept of a genogram is kind of one of those things that they bring up kind of right away in uh, therapeutic kind of educational uh, spaces. And it's a tool that can be used by pretty much anyone for a number of purposes. So there's, uh, we can do them for family things, we can do them for religion, we can do them for money, we can do them for ethnicity. We can do them for lots and lots of reasons. So um, there's different avenues to do them, and there's different um, kind of reasons why we might want to do them. So a genogram, in effect, is a family tree. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw some lines, and I'll give you an example here in a second of kind of what I mean. But we start to develop patterns and start to see some things going on in the family that may not be apparent right away in people's lives. So we're going to draw a family tree, draw some lines, um, make it a little bit kind of interesting, and I'll ask you some interesting questions. You, you said that you'd be my volunteer for today. Yes, I'll volunteer. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, so, and I do want to preface it with you and I do have a relationship kind of going into this. Yes, we do. So I can, I might be able to ask you some questions that I may not ask the person right off the bat. Okay. Uh, and, that, and that's a good thing, so that we kind of have that relationship built up. So. Um, that may be helpful when doing the game. Right? So, so how would you? So, you said first off, when when you first meet someone, sometimes people use the genogram. Sometimes um, they can. And you, you were talking about the fact that you and I have a relationship. Yes. As a practitioner, yes. Does the does the genogram shift whether you have had a number of different sessions or if you're just being introduced to this? individual that you're working with. Does that play a role in how you I think it does. shape a craft? Okay. I think it does in a, in a very subtle way. Some practitioners who are less skilled want to jump right into a gene brain. They want to uh, get that picture going right away. And the, that may not be what the client wants. The client wants a specific thing from you, and so they want you to get something. So doing a genogram you might do it in the second, third, fourth session. Um, you might do it if you're lost. For example, I've done it. I've, I've said, you know, I'm not really sure what's going on in this family, so let's do a giant genogram. We'll do one with the family, or we'll do one with the individual, because I don't understand what's going on, and I need to see what the patterns are here. Okay. They tell me what's going on, but I'm still a little lost. Okay. So jumping right into a genogram may not be the smartest thing to do based on what the client is asking for. So if you have a little bit of relationship and you can frame the conversation, what we're going to do is to see kind of family patterns to see maybe that's, maybe that's what's going on. Now, I do a genogram in my head, and I'll do one of my intake report conscious for myself. I'll ask about the players, which are brothers and sisters, is there anybody else living at home, you know, stuff like that. Who are the major players in your family? I'll draw a small one on my piece of paper, and if it seems like that's the major issue, then we'll go there. If it's not a major issue right away, maybe we'll go there in the second session. Maybe we'll go there in the third session. It's, it's all about timing and what the, what you think the client is looking for. So uh, I draw that on my little piece of paper so I know who the major players are. And I can draw some mental lines what I think is going on. So uh, timing is important in this. And also kind of getting to know the client and what, what it is they're looking for is kind of the other the other major piece to this episode. So when you're going to do a genogram, um, the important thing to remember is since you're the one doing this, is it's your the, the player. You're the major player in this. So let's let's kind of get started a little bit. I only have two colors here, yes. so we'll, we'll work with them. I usually work with like five or six. So okay. kind of bear with me. And what we're going to do, we'll start here. Okay. Now I have to explain something. There are specific shapes for a lot of things, and um, uh, I'll give you. I'll start up here. So squares. Our boys, okay. circles. Oh, the wrong one. Yes. <laughs> See, the nice thing about these is even if you screw up the circle or you screw up the, the symbol, the client will give you a benefit of the doubt. Oh, okay. they don't really know. What, you know, they right, don't know right, right. right. So anyway, squares are boys, circles are girls. Okay. And we'll just start real basic. 
So this is you, yeah. right here, and you are the identified person. So we're going to put you in a double box, big box here. Okay. Now, Andre, how old are you? I am 43 years old. 43. Okay. Keep in mind, this is your genogram. This is the way you view your family. Mm -hmm. Now, if I went and did this with your family, it may look different. They may say something different. They may interpret something different. So just bear that in mind. This is yours personally. Actually, I'm 44. 44. Uh oh. I'm 44. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this short change. Okay. I will also say, you know, when you do a gender, have fun with it. Okay. Because the family's going to have fun with it too. And there's going to be a lot of things, and I'll, I'll point them out as we go along. Uh, the family is going to want to have some fun with it. All right. Humor is the grease that, that, that really gets the cogs moving in the machine that is there. Okay. So uh, what, what we're going to do is we're going to go back. We're going to do three generations. Okay. So there's you. Yes. There's your parents. Yes. And then your grand and my grand. Okay. And so these are just connecting lines. And it's kind of important to try and make as much space as possible because it's depending on how big your family is. You know, I've seen I've seen them about this big. And I've seen them that big up the whole whiteboard. Okay. So obviously everybody has two parents. Yes. Okay. What is your, what is your dad's name? My dad's name is William Cohen. William. A O is N A S I guess. And and how old is he? He is uh, twenty years older than me, so he is sixty. He's actually sixty five. Thank you. Uh and your mom? Rochelle. Okay. I spell that right. Uh, R U S H. Oh, okay. C L O E. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And she is old? She is uh sixty five as well. Thank you. Okay. And are they married to each other? They're divorced. They are divorced. Yep. Okay, so now I'm going to draw some lines here. All right. Okay. Um, this is a divorce. Okay. Now, uh, as we're going through this, we're just going to draw a basic outline of it. Yes. And then we'll start drawing some relational lines. It may help you kind of understand maybe a pattern, maybe something you haven't seen before. Okay. And if not, that's totally cool too. Um, I'm going to look at this, I'm going to give you my feedback, and I'm going to ask you some questions. And feel free to jump in with information that I, I didn't get to. So we've got Rochelle, we've got William. They're divorced. Yes. Roughly when did they divorce? Um, 87. Okay. 1987. So we're going to put a little D. 87. Right there. And are they remarried? Um, my remarried. dad. Yeah, my dad has been remarried. Um, this is his uh, second, well, this is his third marriage. Okay, so he has one here yep. with a divorce. Yes. Okay. Then now uh, he's got another one over here. That is current. That is current, yes. Okay. Um, we'll get to them in a second. Okay. Mom remarried. My mom did remarry. Okay. One time? One time. Okay. And she was is divorced with him as well. Okay. Is she currently single or single? She is uh, I think she's single someone. Okay. So Single line means they were married, so that little slash there means they're divorced. Okay. Um, this line right here means uh, indicates a relationship, but okay. not married. Okay. 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 Makes sense? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's about to get deep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We're going we're gonna to have some fun with this. So, um, do you know her name? The one, the, the second marriage? Uh, yes. Her name is Dina. Dina. Kind of yeah. Okay. So I was, yeah. No. Well. No. She, she was a yeah. yeah. Did they have any kids together? No. They did not. Okay. Uh, and is she still in the picture at all? She's not. Okay. So she's kind of off doing oh. her own thing. Yeah. Okay. His current wife. Um. Della. Della. P E L L A. Yeah. Okay. And uh, they live together. Yeah. Okay. Did they have any kids together? They did not. Yeah. Okay. And how old is Della? Uh, she's roughly, I'd say she's probably 16. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll okay. I, I, you know, when we go Oh, of course. So, well, rough ages are rough okay. Ages. That's okay. And um, so, uh, mom divorced this gentleman? Yep. His name was? Tony, and he is deceased. Okay. Okay, so we, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw, sometimes in the books, what they'll tell you is they draw an X through the person. 
That's a little extreme. It is a little it? extreme. <laughs> so for a dead for a dead person, it is. So what? So instead of drawing a big X to it, I draw a small X like this. It's an indication that the person has passed away. Is that the reason they divorced or just yeah, instantly? Yeah. And he died roughly probably about five years ago. Okay, 2010-ish. Yeah. Well, we'll just years ago. Oh. And she's in a relationship with somebody. Yeah. And, and I, I think it's uh, I think it's Jack. Jack. I'm not yeah. sure. Okay. Okay. Did any any kids from these relationships? No kids. Okay. Once again, we're just making the framework. Yeah. Do you have any siblings? I do. Okay. I have uh, I have uh, two brothers and a sister. Both from this relationship? Yeah. Okay. So two brothers, uh, one, two, so here's the here's your sister. Yeah. Here's your brother. So this is where things get a little complicated. So when you're doing the genogram, make sure you give yourself plenty of space because it can spread out very quickly. Okay. And you can erase the thing. Okay. Uh, so you have two, okay, two brothers, and uh, their names are. Um, so I'm the oldest. Okay. So uh, my next brother is William. Okay. And to be fair, I did screw this up because usually you go in chronological order. Okay. But it's the best. So and how old is William? Um, he is uh, two years younger than me, so he's forty-two. And your brother? Uh, Damien. And David is uh, six years younger than me, so he's just 38. 30 okay. And his sister is? is? She is 40. And what her name? Crystal. C R Y. Okay. Basic framework. Yep. Any kids on here that I missed? Nope. Okay. Are you married? I am. Okay. So uh, what we're going to try and do, we're going to try and make some Base here. And this is going to be a little complicated. And and you're married uh, to a female? Yes, to a female. Okay. Patricia. Yeah. Well, well it's it, it anywhere these yeah. days. Hey, you know. Patricia. Okay. Yeah. And she goes by Patricia. Okay. 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 So she is 30. 30. You don't look 44, I'll say that. Yes, I appreciate that. Well, that's, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And you have, you two have children? Yes. Okay. We have one child, one female child. Yeah. And then it's two people. And how old is she? She is one years old. One? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. It's Both are funny. Yeah. Right. Do either of you have children? No. Other children? No. First marriage for both of you? Yes. Ah, makes it easy. All right. Because <laughs> once, once we start moving, things start to get a little complicated. Okay. Any of your brothers and sisters married? Yes, they are. Um, yes. All of them are? Yes. Okay. So let's let's do this. We're going to just move some things around here. And all heterosexual relationships? Yes. Okay. Have to ask. Um, so this is where it gets a little complicated. Uh, let's start start here on William. Yep. His, his wife. Uh, Tracy. Tracy. She is roughly how old? Uh, roughly. Uh, forty two hundred and his sisters forty. Okay. Okay. And they have children? Yes. Okay. Yep. William the third. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I, okay. I see. I see that. Yeah. There. Okay. We'll, we'll say Will the third. Yep. And Sierra. Like, uh, yes, Sierra. Okay, and they're roughly how old? Uh, Will is uh, 18, what, now 21. 21, okay. Yep. And Sierra is uh, 14. Okay. Move over to any other thing? Nope. Okay. Damien is married to who? To uh, Kelly. And how old is And Kelly is probably around 30 as well. Okay. Yeah. And they have kids? Yes, they do. Okay. They have four kids. Okay. Uh, Jabari, or Jay. 
point four eight ten, and he is uh, fourteen ten. Um, Connor, okay. yeah, female. Okay. Um, he's sixteen. See, oh, yeah, for for space sake, yeah, for space sake. Uh -huh. Um, and then there is um, there are two more daughters, and that is a lot of them for sixteen. That's a yeah, so they're uh they're stair steps, so the youngest one is plus two, the other one is uh, four, mm -hmm. and um the kind of probably is about Okay. Critical cousin? Uh Walter. Okay. And they have uh, five kids. Oh wow, okay. Yeah. Uh well, let's see what we can do about Walter. Just for the sake of fitting everybody in. Yep. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Walter is roughly 40? Uh, uh, he's my age. He's my age. Oh, he's 44. Okay. And they have five kids? Yep, they have five kids. Possible. Yeah. Especially this side. Yep, yep. So, uh, the oldest daughter mm -hmm. is Raquel, which is called W. W. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, the next uh, three or four is. And that's still be Walter. Okay. And what is he? Yes. Wellington. Well. Wow. Got a W theme going on here. And Riley. Oh, yeah. Wrigley, but got it. Okay, I got it. I know Walter. 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 Well, what does Crystal do? Nothing now. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing now. That's what they could do there. Right. Okay. And so, so uh, the yes, one thing to point out in terms of ages. Yep. Raquel is uh, 21. 21. Okay. And then Walter is uh, 16. When, oh, well, Winston is 16. Walter is 15. They share the same birth together. They can get apart. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And then now, uh, Wellington is is uh, ten mm -hmm. and his uh, sister is nine. Okay. Quite a few kids on this side. Yeah. Uh, let's, uh, I'm going to erase this just for... We got that male-female circle thing. We finally did get that. We did get that down. We finally figured that out, yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Uh, Walter, Walter is uh, 16. Mm -hmm. Okay. Walter is 16. Okay. Uh, Bert Parker, so Bert, B U B U R T. U okay. Yes. Bert Parker. Yes. Okay. And Chris Stella. Stella. Yeah. Uh, Lewis. Okay. And are they still with us? They are not. They 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 both passed. Okay. What, so roughly what age were they when they passed? So my um my grandfather was about forty five when he passed. Okay. Fairly young. Fairly young. Fairly young. Yeah. Okay. So again, that small little X. Yes, yeah, small little X. And then uh, Priscilla just passed uh, this last uh, April. Okay. So 2015, she was in 91. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And for good job. Yes. And uh, were they were married at one point. They, they were married at one point, and they they had a divorce. Okay. And I, I do want to point out that it, it, it may sound as though I'm asking very simple, rudimentary questions, yep. but it's important because to assume that people were married is, is an assumption that may not make sense. You know, especially if, you know, you know I, I hate to kind of point this out, but I've got divorce, 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 divorce. We haven't got to this side of the family yet, yep. but I'm starting to notice one thing already. Not that it means anything, but just kind of as a... It's interesting. Yeah. So, yes. okay. So they divorced. Yeah. Uh, did she remarry? She did remarry. Did he remarry? Um, he did not. Okay. So she remarried once. Yes. Okay. And and again, I'm asking the simple question because it, it, it in these the smallest details can make a big difference. So to assume, you know, my assumption, and this is where my bias comes in, is that the people of the older generation stuck it out. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. 
Okay, so she got remarried. Yes. To who? Uh, to Charlie. Charlie. Okay. She's still with us? Okay. And I would say we passed um, and so mm -hmm. Rough age is okay. Yeah. And did she have any siblings? Um, Your mom have any siblings? Yeah, so uh, so on this side of the divorce, okay. we put her um, her two sisters on this side. With with Bert? With Bert. Okay. So there's two mm -hmm. sisters. Okay. Any other? Uh, we'll get yeah. the details on there. Yep. So with with Charlie and yeah. Gisella, there are uh, eight siblings. Eight? Eight. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So one, two, three, four. Well, actually, let me back up. There's six. So there's a total. My, my okay. mother had actually put another a third circle on the which first. Yep. Another two now. Yep. Okay. So there's three. All girls. Um, oh, at least, at least yeah, here. Yep, yeah, all here is all girls. Wow. Okay. On the other side, yeah. um, there are, this is my, sister, my mom has a total of nine brothers and sisters, so and ten total. Wow. Of them. Four on this side, so six on the other side. Wow. So, okay. Now, in situations where there's a number of siblings like that, especially when it's much further in generation, um, it's I, I find, at least for time's sake, especially because it's several pieces removed. Yeah. Any of these siblings more important than the others? Now, when I say important, I say for likability sake, like it really glommed on the this one. Yeah. And the opposite, which is they could not stand Bill. Yeah. Just Bill got on everybody's nerves, or so positive and negative. Big, you know. Impactful relationship. Not that be positive, but yeah. can be negative. Yes, I, I would say that it, out of those, so when we talk about my mother's brothers and sisters, yep. the two individuals that probably stand out more than the others. Okay. That would be uh, the oldest daughter, who is my aunt and my Lorraine. Yep. 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 Okay. And uh, she just passed, um, so she is, uh, she was 70, so, uh, roughly around 70, so she just passed uh, also. In, uh, in April. Oh, wow. Okay. In, uh, my grandmother was living with my aunt and uncle, so. Oh, they were living together. Living together so. Okay. So I'm going to just try to draw a circle around it. Now, normally I'd wait to get to more of the line bit, but you give important bit of the point. So these two were very close. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they were very close. Okay. So the other side, and this is where I think the difference is, is that the oldest daughter was the And why was he important? Uh, because I think he was the oldest boy oh. and he wanted first of all off the college after his his, his group is Okay, so uh, so he's somewhat influential. Mm. Okay, so he's he's a um uh, uh, slightly ahead of myself, but would you say uh, very influential in, in your mother's life? I would say sort of because she is older than him. Okay. And so she saw herself as the protector kind of thing. Oh, so whether he saw that from her or not, that's okay. kind of how she saw him. Okay. So in a positive way? In, in a positive way. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to draw these lines and we'll make sense of the time. So let's get the kind of the outline over here done and then we're going to get into the very interesting stuff. Okay. Um, so far, okay. Yeah. Didn't miss anybody major or really. Okay. Let me stay outside. Yep, so my grandfather's name was, um, he was right at JW, you know, right at the uh, John Wilson, so okay. he was, and he passed in the end of his life, 67, so okay. And then uh, my grandmother's name is Valora. Yeah, it's uh, W I L L O R A. Okay. That's kind of what I figured. Yeah. Her dad was one of them, her mom was uh, Laura. Ah, uh, okay. Well, <laughs> that's a good bit of, you know, yeah. history yeah. to know, so, yeah. okay. Fair enough. Uh, and is she still with us? No, she also, she passed 
Uh, about 40 years ago, okay, so she, um, she was 89. Mm. So you got a couple of people who lived in 89, 91, uh, 70. So, I mean, you, you got some, you got a couple of folks here. Yeah. One that, that kind of left us a little early. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. is there a particular reason why? Uh, health. Health reasons? Okay. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. diabetes. Oh, okay. Uh, for for maintenance or for maintenance or even bad luck with health. Well, I ask that question because when you see somebody passing away at a young age, sometimes that can influence yeah. some of the rest of it. And I would say that it did. Okay. Each way. I, I assume we'll get to it. Sure. Okay. So when we when we get to remind me to bring that up. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put a little just a little doc as a reminder to myself to ask about that. Uh, you know, if it's a car accident or, or a medical issue, that's really, you know, yeah, good word, I guess. So, so okay, so let's let's finish this piece yeah. and we'll get to the, that. And your brother had any siblings? So my, my father had uh, two siblings. Okay. Um, so I can move this way a little bit. Yeah, so uh, both male. Okay. Um, John, second. And uh, Alonzo, who is the oldest. So, is he your ass? Let's see. Okay. And there, he's, Alonzo's the oldest? Yeah, he's the oldest. So, okay. he's, he's about five years older than my dad, so he's in the 70s. Okay. And John uh, died at an early age as well. So, he was probably around 35. Oh, okay. Is that that passing important? Um, I think so. Was it impactful? Uh, I believe it was impactful in terms of what the family legends are. Oh, you know, oh, the legend. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. I'm going to put a dot on that one too. That one sounds good. Yeah. So, I've got. And my grandparents. I'm sorry, boys. Oh, thank you for reminding me. So, one of the nice things is once you get this, the ball rolling with this. You did exactly what a lot of families did. But Eric, Eric, Eric you forgot so and so. You, yeah. you gotta, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got, you, so the nice thing is, is at a certain point, they'll start reminding you of what's going on. So it becomes more, less of a, 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 of a um, kind of academic thing or performance. And yes. more, this is my family. This is, my family. This, this this is, is personal. Family. This is personal. This is very personal. So I'm gonna ask you some very personal questions. Here we go. So I'm going to ask you some personal questions. Okay. Remember, this is your viewpoint yep. of this. Okay. So there's no judgment here. There's no whatever. And um, it's just the way things go. Yep. Um, anybody I miss, or sometimes I'll put this out here. Sometimes there are peripheral people who are out here who are, you know, they could be best friends. They can be um, mistresses. They can be Lovers, they can be, um, you know, just really influential people in a family life, like a reverend or a pastor or a clergy member. Somebody who's here, not by family, they're not blood tied, but they're very important. Anybody who might follow yes. this. So there's two, there's two people that are important in this whole kind okay. of uh, uh, whole scenario. The whole scenario. Sure. One is uh, Bert Parker's father. Okay. Uh, his name is Sam Parker, okay. and he, he's important uh, because he tried to fill the shoes of his oh. son. So oh. oh, he became the man of this house. Yes, he made an attempt to be so. Yes. Okay, so we'll draw, a, we'll draw kind of a dotted line around this as a reminder of kind of how this tried to play out. Yeah. Okay. And then on this side, uh, my grandfather, John, remarried mm -hmm. to a woman named uh, Ella. Okay. And uh, so that's important to the family. Constellation. That's a Constellation. That's a good word. That's a good so, word. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So far, let's just take stock of how something what do you what do you what do you think of all this? Have you seen it this this way before? I've I've thought about it and it, 
you know, yeah. in, in these kinds of ways. Yeah. Uh, there's things on here that actually make me nervous. Really? Because you're seeing high speed reoccurring things. Mm -hmm. um, and okay. And, uh, so those, those, those things make me a bit nervous about my own. About this right here? Uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. It, it doesn't make it inevitable. No. No. It's just something to keep in mind. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I like to start in the middle. You can start this any way you want. Um, I tend to start in the middle and kind of branch my way up. So uh, there are some lines, and if, if you'll excuse me, I'll do this for the camera, but I'm going to draw some lines just so that they can see it. One line means you like the person, you're okay, but you, you, if you were forced to be in a room with them, you might go. You like them, yep. but you know, you were not going to go out of your way to see them. So that's one line. One line. We've got two lines, which means you're pretty tight. I like that person. We get along. We're, you know, things are pretty good. We're good. Okay. Um, three lines means you are what we call enmeshed with that person, meaning uh, things are a little too close. Okay. Um, you know, you've seen these families. You know, sometimes it's mother, daughter, father, son, where um, it's a little too close. They finish each other's sentences. Yeah. It's a little, it's an unhealthy level of connection. Okay. Like, oh, so what are you going to do today? Well, what are they doing? What, what's Bill doing? Yeah. I can't do anything without them. I can't think without, you know, yeah. it's a little unhealthy. Yeah. Okay. Almost a kind of yes. thing. Okay. Yes, would, I, would, I would go there. Okay. And the nice thing is, is you can, you can mix and match all these different lines all you want to make them to make your family or your situation fit. So these lines are not set in stone and you can make them out of it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to make a jagged line, which means it's an abrasive relationship. You don't really like each other. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a wavy line, which is abuse. Okay. We're going to specify, we can specify what kind of abuse. So like physical alcohol, physical. Yep. Okay. And that's another good question. Sometimes I'll ask the question, and, and you're always going to forget something, so that happens. Is, you know, is anybody in here an addict? You can do an addict tree. I've done that before. I've done that with people. I've done it with abusers, people who are physical abusers. They they can trace where, this, where that physical abuse comes from. Mm -hmm. So, um, another line, a dotted line. Distance. Okay. Meaning, this one, you kind of like the person, and they're fine. This is. I just, I, I, no, okay. no. Now, there's another one even further than that, like this, which is cut off. Okay. Which means, yeah, not only no, but hell no. Yeah, so they're like, I don't want them. I don't, 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 don't call me. me. Yeah. Okay. Don't talk to me. Yeah. We're done. So, and we can mix and match all of these. Really one, and there's a couple more too, but these are kind of the big ones. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. And sometimes it helps to describe what all these lines are. And if we come to some extra lines, I'll show you what those. And again, if you do as, a, as a technique, mm -hmm. you also do these with different colors. Yes, typically. Yeah, I would have more, more colors. More colors. So you can see yeah. the pattern a little okay. bit easier. Okay. Um, but that's that's okay. Usually this will work. Okay. Um, so I might ask you, you know, how are you, how's your relationship with so and so? And you can tell me one line, two line, three line. And I may ask you a follow up question. Okay. Um, there are plenty of times where you know, uh, it's like this, okay? Which is, we like each other, but man, we butt heads. We're too much alike, for example, right? Um, there also may be where you said, you know, I got a fight with so-and-so, and now we don't talk. So it's gonna look like this, an abrasive relationship with a cutoff. Okay, so you can combine the, yeah. the, the relationships. Mm -hmm. So these are basically relationship lines. That we're going to be adding to. Okay. Yep. And hopefully some patterns will come out. You've already seen one line I've drawn in there. Yep. I've drawn a bottom line. Who lives with who and whatnot. So let's start pretty simple. You and Patricia. Yes. How would you kind of describe that relationship? I would say we'll probably be here or two on this or two on. Now I have to ask the question would she describe it the same way? I think so. I yeah. think so. Yeah. Okay. You have to ask because yeah. you know sometimes it's the other way. Right, right, right. And, <laughs> and, and, and actually, I can't speak for her. Uh, obviously, it's not 
This is my perspective. This is your perspective, yes, so, on your thing. On my thing. Yes. So uh, let's go to the next nearest uh, relationship point, which is your yep. How would you describe the relationship with your mother? I'd say the relationship with my mother is pretty small. So two, two, two more lines here? Two lines, yeah. Okay. How would you describe the relationship with your dad? I would say my relationship with my dad is probably a combination between a line and a dot. Right? So in my head, I kind of had that. I, I wondered. Yeah. That kind of. So okay. So it's kind of we're kind of distant, but we're you know we're kind of related, but it's not we're not, definitely not a dot. So. Fair enough. Now. I'm going to depart just for a second. Yes. Your brother William. Yes. The next old with over here. The next one down. Yes. How would you describe your relationship with your dad? With your father? How would I describe his relationship with my dad? Mm -hmm. I would say that they're probably. Now this is going to sound interesting too. Okay. Probably a double line with a dot. Okay. And why do you say that? Um. Because. So in, in their in my in our younger years, um, he went to live with my dad, staying with my dad. They obviously had a different relationship than I had. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure if it's strained now or not, okay. uh, but they certainly had a, a, a close relationship. I, I think in the probably the other two kids, mm -hmm. I would say it'd be a strong double line uh, for their relationship to my father. These, yeah, really, okay. And why do you think, why would you say that the two oldest boys have a bit of a strained relationship with him, but the two younger ones have a pretty good relationship? Yeah, I, I would say that um, fairly or unfairly. No, no, it, this is your opinion. That, that um, I think. We, we had more influence uh, from our mother than mm. other people did. Okay, so when they were when they were divorcing then, yeah, or okay, in that divorcing period. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. And you would describe the relationship with your mother to William as the same, two lines. Yeah. It's, it's, okay. So here's going to be an interesting question. I'm interested to hear this. Since you said that with your dad, less influence here. Mom, how would you describe their relationship, these two, with your mom? I would say that my sister's relationship is probably a three line relationship with my mother. A little too close? Sometimes, yeah. Okay. Like, a little more melting. Like, talk to each other like every day. Oh, uh, okay. So you kind of joined the hip. Kind of joined the hip. Gotcha. Uh, okay. And, and uh, I, I would say that my brother and my mother are probably a three line as well. Okay. How would you really help? now at this very moment? Relationship between your mom and you. Uh, you definitely, I would say a mix of what was the waiting line again? Uh, this is abuse. abuse. We can okay. specify what kind. No, this is a break. This is a break that I would say just basically broken. Single line with a cut. Single line with a cut. But they're not really. We don't really have. Fair enough. So sometimes this, can, this this question can get interesting results. What's your mother's relationship to your wife? Um, I think it's a, a double line. Okay, you think they get along well? Yeah, I think they get along well. Same with your dad too. Uh, yeah. Okay. Because yeah. your relationship is we're cool. But I'm not sure. Yeah. And but Patricia's is okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and I will say this, it does get a little messy after a while, but that's okay because even then you can still see it, but uh, a little messy is okay. You embrace the mess. You embrace the mess. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm already noticing a small pattern here, which is everybody likes your mom. Yeah. She seems like a cool lady. Yeah. So she's a cool lady. Yeah. Okay. I, I, obviously, unless you're married to her. 
<laughs> so, Fair enough. So there's some, you know. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, have you met this Jack person? Speaking of which, now that you brought that up. Yeah, I have. I, I know Jack. Yeah. And? He's, he's a cool guy. How, how do they get along? Are they? Yeah, I guess they get around, along pretty well. Okay. Like, you know. Okay. So two. two yeah, two lines. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I want to branch off the yeah. How do you go along? Let's, let's start. So let's, we can start with your siblings. Okay. Okay. So uh, between you and William, let's start there. Yeah. How would I, you describe that? Well, so I would say William, um, Damien, and Crystal. We all have a, kind of a similar relationship, which is uh, a line and a dot. So okay. we get along, but you know we don't. We don't necessarily call each other every day or even holidays. Uh, anything ever happened, we would be there for each other, but we sure. we're not. Like, I don't know what they're doing right now. And you would say that between their relationships, too? I would, I would say that, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so. Let's just let, let's draw this in here for a quick second. Okay. What do you make of what do you make of this situation? Sort of stand by for my grief, but but to emphasize it, which is everybody really gets along a lot of time. Yep. People are hitting this with that, some yep. point. And people are down here, this relationship is kinda of hit or miss as well. Yes. What do you make of that? I'm not sure what to make of it. It's, uh, it's, it's somewhat backwards, particularly when you see it. Uh -huh. on, on the face. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what to make of it. But, um, That's okay. Something to think about. Yeah. And you don't have to have a right or wrong answer. Yeah. It is what it is. Okay. And um, so we can we can kind of branch out a little bit. Did you did you you probably never knew Bert? I guess. Um, I I have stories of having known stories, but I don't I don't consider. Okay. Did you ever meet Sam? Yes, Sam. Okay. Was with us. Yeah. Oh, he lived with you. Yes. That. Okay. How does that work? Yeah. So. How does that work? So. Um, so Sam, in, in terms of you know, Bert Parker, was was the obvious um, patriarch. Right? Okay. And so when um, when Bert died. Um, well, Sam was always kind of a, a very big presence, even um, in Bert's life. So Bert was kind of even under his shadow. Right? Oh, okay. Very kind of person. And so he, he kind of drove the family. And so you, might, you might say this was a little bit abrasive. I would say that might be, yeah, a little bit abrasive. Okay. So, um, so if you get Sam's a very you know, large character. Yeah, he's a pretty large character. Okay. So in the, in the, uh, in the 80s, um, Sam was, uh, so he, uh, Sam was 10 years older than the, the generation. So in 19, uh, so about 85, he was 85. So, okay. he was so we moved in with him mm -hmm. to help him because mm -hmm. he was getting at the age. So mm -hmm. um, I was okay. 14 or 15 at that time. So he became Okay. Grandfather, maybe that's why I always use my great grandfather. Gotcha. Okay. And would you describe, I mean, so he was he kind of abrasive with a lot of people? Um, or was I'm, it just when he was acting as dad? Yeah, I can't answer that. I don't know. Okay. I, I, because okay. I only know well, with him when okay. he was acting as, as dad. Well, when he was acting as dad with your mom, how would you describe Sam? Technically, her grandfather. Yeah. I, did, I would say your perspective. This is your perception. Yeah, this is my perception. Mm -hmm. That it was, it was probably a line. Mm -hmm. um, Wait, this is good. Okay. Again, combined. And right. if we so, so maybe even in this sounds good. Maybe even a double line yep. with a person. Sure. Sure. So he was. I might describe these people as loving but very firm. Yeah, very firm. I'm doing this for your own good. Old school kind of get a switch yeah. kind of yeah. that kind of guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what you're yeah. talking about. I know it's close. Sure. Okay. 
And it, it sounds like Prinzilla was around as well. Yep. Okay. And how would you describe your your my mother? perception of my relationship, my mother's relationship with her mother? Yeah. I would say that um, equal the same double line mm -hmm. with the same kind of conflict in it. Really? Uh, my grandmother was a very hard woman. Okay. Um, and so she got old and then she became very soft. But okay. Yeah, some some yeah. people graduate out of the firmness. Yeah. Sure. She's no nonsense kind of a you know, my my way, highway. Yeah. Kind of stuff. It does sound like Michelle and Lorraine were almost a three. Yes, they were three. Because they lived together. Now Well my Aunt Lorraine was, was a three with my mother and my Aunt Lorraine was a three with my grandmother. Her. Yes. Really? Yeah. Okay. Was Was there any particular? Was just Lorraine that way with anybody, or just watched on the book? Well, no. But yes. Yes and no. I, I, I think you know, for for Lorraine, it was important to be in control. Mm -hmm. um, and so, really, um, she could. Oh, did she? Did so when Bert died? Did she see the boy and try and take care of him? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, just That's a good question. Yes, yeah, just an eye. I, 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 but I do know that um, that Lorraine um, was was a serious nature art. Okay. Um, very motherly. Very motherly. Was she this way to the other two pictures too? To yeah. so all of the two. Oh, yeah. okay. very. And and you you described it as control. I did kind of say control. So okay. again, perception. Perception. Yeah. Right. And she is setting herself up, I guess, to be the person. Yeah, she was the person. Interesting. Just, again, something to think about. You've got three lines, and then this one, the crystal. Yes. Here. Yes. And it's, you've got three brothers and one girl. Yes. And she's a mess with What do you think? Yeah, my mother's setting herself to be the patriarch. Well, and, and maybe rightfully so. And rightfully so. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe rightfully so. Yeah. Okay. What do you, I don't know. Have you, did this, have you noticed this before? Yeah, I, I have certainly noticed it. Okay. And, Does it cause conflict at all? Um, no, it doesn't. However, sometimes I I feel for my sister because she, in some ways, feels, in my opinion, she may feel trapped. Mm -hmm. Stuck, stuck in Ohio, where the rest mm -hmm. of us have all left. None of, none of the boys there. It's an interesting question. Yep. That often comes up. So Rochelle, Jack, and this part of the family is in Ohio. Yep. Anybody else in Ohio? No. Just these people. Well, this whole side of the family, this for the most part, is in Ohio. Okay. So let's let's yeah, she she passed away. Um, the whole, we're going to draw a circle around yeah, the whole, the whole bit, or we're going to say Ohio. So there, it, it would make, so now it suddenly makes a little bit of sense why there's a little bit of a dotted line to right. Crystal. Yeah. Because she's out of state. She's out of state. And they're all out of, I mean, they're all out of state. I mean, we're all out of state from each other, so mm -hmm. that's what I've got in mind. But, yeah. And, the rest of everybody else is in Minnesota? Um, nope. Okay. So, my dad is in Tennessee, my brothers are in Atlanta. Okay. I'm obviously in Minnesota. So, draw a line around you three. Okay, so you're, you've got some distance between all of you. Yep. Why do you think that is? Everybody's kind of yeah. Yeah. scattered. It, it's kind of obvious when you look at the guy, I mean, you know, there's a line and the guy is on. Okay, when you say obvious, what do you mean? Well, it, um, not obvious to me. Right, so the, the geography of where we are has mm -hmm. a lot to do with the relationships that we have, mm -hmm. according to in my perception mm -hmm. you know, of where we are. So, yeah, so the data line around my father, the data line around my brothers, um, I think also is related to our, to our distance. I just thought of something. What's really, what, what is the relationship to Sam? Because I started putting two and two together, and it sounds like Sam and you moved in 
while they were still together. Is that true? Okay. So what's their relationship like? Especially if these are larger than my character. Yeah, I would say probably pretty strange. Uh, okay. So maybe um, Dot with a squiggly bit. Yeah, Dot with a squiggly bit. Well, I can imagine with the squiggly bit because if you've got somebody here who's I'm dad, and somebody else is coming in and saying, no, 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 I'm dad, I can see some conflict arising right there. So it makes sense to me anyway. Yeah. But jagged line on a squiggly line. Okay. And, and it, then it makes me wonder, did that situation precipitate from the test? Um, I would imagine that some of it is it it a factor. I, I would say it is, it is a Not factor. factor. You know, I would say it is a factor. Yeah. It is a factor. Okay. Yeah. So branching out just a little bit, I'm trying to get a, a big picture, just you know, making sure we've got some time here. Um, your view of how you're, and, and, and this can go, you know, just based on stories you've heard, you don't have to have yeah. personal experience, but what do you think their relationship was with your dad? With your dad? So, what was my dad's relationship with his parents? Yeah. I think um, with my grandmother, it was probably a three line. Okay. Really? Yeah. Uh, uh, for, excuse the phrase, mama's boy? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And with his dad? Uh, probably a line to the dot. Okay. So a little bit, a little, little bit that he's there, but mentally, you know, kind of just checked out. Maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. But that's basically okay. yeah. your perception. Yeah. Based on the stories you've heard and, yeah. and things. So, okay. So, uh, Ask another question. We've got a grandma here who's very enmeshed with her little boy, who then marries a woman who's sort of enmeshed here, and then we've got a dad who's distant, and then ends up kind of having some distant relationships as well. What do you think? I think you replicate one. <laughs> That's a very intellectual answer. Right, right. <laughs> I think we replicate what we know. I mean, I think we... Is, it, is there some of this nervousness coming in? It is, in fact. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because, I mean, if looking at my, my mother's side and then looking at my father's side, it becomes very obvious that... Yeah. ...that people are starting to replicate relationships that they have had as a part of. And the nervousness, again, comes back to the individual being me mm -hmm. that these are not patterns that I necessarily want to replicate because I can go back and see what, what the results are. Sure. Now, if we could, I mean, in in theory, do this, I mean, we could do a big spreadsheet and spend several sessions. I've done more than two sessions with clients because it does get so big and so, and so long. I'm gonna. I, I, I kind of have to ask a so a couple questions, and then just for time. For time yeah. um, if you were in a bind and you had only one phone call, it doesn't matter. If you, had, you were in a massive bind. You only talked to one person. Your mom. Okay. Again, it seems like it happened in lady. It seems like the people go to the, the one everybody goes to. Yeah. Okay. That makes me wonder if she set it up that way. Whether possibly or not. No. Well, if, I mean, just looking at the, the diagram, one could certainly suggest that, that yeah. she did set it up that way. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Is there anybody in here where people are just like, no. hell no. Screw that person. They were mean. They were jerk. They were. Nobody likes this person. I don't think so. I don't think there's any one person. I think there are attributes of people, but I don't think there's any one person that folks feel like. You know, we want to take another hand if they would. Sure. Okay. And I have to ask if there is any any abuse in your family that you should be aware of? I think there's a lot of uh, alcohol abuse and okay. physical abuse that kind of sprinkles me out, particularly 
on the right side, mom side, the mom side. And I'm gonna take a stab in the dark as the start of the summer. Uh, or am I wrong? Yeah, I would say not necessarily start with Sam, but I would, I would, I would say that kind of culturally, there's some cultural things around physical abuse that okay. people did as natural. It, it's a considered natural. Did you ever aim it at anybody in particular? Um, I don't think so. Okay, because sometimes they, you know, they'll yeah. pick one or two yeah. kind of to release yeah. something. Yeah, but yeah, okay. I, I can't speak to, to that a lot, but I do know that physical abuse and there's less alcohol Okay. Sure, and sometimes um, to find another color, we would, uh, oops, uh, who would, who would we mark as kind of having problems with alcohol? I would say um, the Lewis's color on that. Okay, so we, you know, I know it's color, I put, I put a page in the corner. Yeah, okay. And did that trickle down to your mom too? Um, did she have an issue with it? Not necessarily an issue, but uh, being in an environment where alcohol is abusive, you kind of get the secondary mm. response and the protective way of seeing all the things associated with protecting folks to. Uh, Do you think that's why Lorraine is the way she is? Yes, I think that's the way she is. Okay. For a number of reasons. Light, light bulb. Yeah. Okay. So that so not only she's protective. Yep. Yeah, so she was, was protected and she was okay. All of those things and uh, so this lady right here. Yes. Yeah. It's it's kind of your mom, yeah. right? But it's actually her. Yeah. She's the one. No, not, no again. We're not blaming her. No, we're not. No, 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 no blame. No, no responsibility. It just is. It's an interesting fact that she would take. The protective motherly, you know, I, motherly views kind of come, come, come to me. Come, so I will, I will protect you from all, of all of all this. the world, yes, right, and the world, and uh, the alcoholism, you know, all that good jazz. And then, so she would be the overbearing one, and then your mom is the nice one. Isn't that weird? It is not weird But your mom is, she's, she's the the um, protective, and then we've got nurture over here. We've got the she feels nice. Yeah. You know, she feels that nice voice. Yeah. Huh. Mm-hmm. Again, this is yeah. this is perception, and, yeah. and this is the way we look at it. So, if, I'm going to invite you to kind of take a step back over here for a second okay. to walk off camera. So, so physically yeah, physically walk off, walk off camera. camera. And I'm going to move over here, and I'm going to ask you to take a step. You know, take a step and kind of look at it. Um, and give me your impression. Good, bad, otherwise, it doesn't matter. Your impression. Okay. 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 So, it looks like my uh, my grandfather and my dad's relationship is the same as my relationship with my dad. Mm-hmm. It also looks like um, my relationship with my mother is uh, very similar to the relationship I have with my wife. Mm-hmm. You, you, you get a little emotional. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. That's okay. What, what's what's going on? Yeah, what's going on? Yeah. So it's just interesting to see all of it on because I have choices. So. Okay. Um, yes, both yeah. 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 So, so like all of us, I have choices, and I can continue a number of patterns, or I can start changing. And I know that um, from seeing a number of these individuals personally, mm-hmm. that um, that trauma and stress and racism. And sure, we need to go there. Yeah. 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 Go there. It's been a huge part of of why people. Died young, mm-hmm. why um, folks were protective of other of other people and tried to build relationships um, because my mother's relationship with us mm-hmm. being double lines and the same that she tried to have with her her oldest youngest older brother. So sure. so that makes sense. And, um, keeping her relationship with Jack is a very friendly one, not mm-hmm. necessarily. And I don't even know if it's 
you know, how intimate that relationship is, but it's certainly a very similar relationship to what she has with, with the kids, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you, 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 I know you, you started to get a little bit emotional, you, yeah. you pulled back. Yeah. Why did you pull back? Um, because it, I, is it easier to do it academically? No, it, it, so it, yes, it's easier to do it <laughs> academically. Okay. But the other thing that I realized was that um, for the emotions that I, I was I was feeling, mm -hmm. there is there's a response that I can use my emotions mm -hmm. to actually move mm -hmm. move forward with. And so, just thinking about these relationships that I want to to continue or how I want them to be different was in my control, and I don't have to. Yes. I can I can. Um, Use my emotions mm -hmm. to it, uh, to change how those things are, as opposed to just wallowing in those emotions and and wallow and you as wallow, right? And 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 my response, to you might be um, you call it wallowing. I kind of think I call it sitting there experiencing the experience, and and so experiencing it for you feels like wallowing, like it's a bad thing. You shouldn't experience. Um, or experience them too long. Like, yeah, like, and, and so 15 seconds there was dead long. <laughs> that was too much. <laughs> yes, 15 seconds was too long and too much to experience those emotions. No, but uh, yeah, okay. So, um, good, bad, or otherwise, you know, it's, it's, just, it's an observation. Right? And so you've noticed some things, I pointed out some things in here, you had a reaction. Um, and, and that's kind of where that therapeutic stuff comes in. Is just, you, you're having a reaction to things, you're seeing the patterns, you're going away, and then you're experiencing this, maybe possibly for the first time, maybe just because you've seen it in a physical, drawn out map. Now, that's not to say in five years, six months, this might look good enough. Yeah. This motivates people. You know, shifting back to kind of the academia, this motivates some people to do something. Mm -hmm. To go, wow. And then other people, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. So, uh, but the more time we thought, oh, we could a good solid hour there, yeah. kind of. Yeah. And we could keep going, and we'd see more patterns, and we'd see more things. You know, like, we need to get to the mm -hmm. and, and that's important to you. That's a big piece of who you are uh, to look at otherwise. So, so how, how would you even have to, so to, to go there, right? Mm -hmm. So, in, 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 we could do, you know, um, Domestic violence. Yep. We could do alcoholism. We could do finances. Some people finances. are really good or really bad finances, right? So, so for example, taking racism. How would you? What kinds of questions would you start asking if you get to how racism impacted all of this stuff? I might, you know, I might ask, you know, what sort of messages have you heard about it? What sort of things uh, have you been told by your parents? What stories have they told you? Okay, about this. Um, my grandfather, for example, who uh, I come from a predominantly white family, although I've got a Native American side, side, you never know what I look at. Um, you know, they told stories of when he lived in the South, of what it was like to be white. Okay, so that's part of my racial makeup. And so the stories you have heard, and things that you've been taught of, oh, don't say this, don't say that, don't say this, and you can kind of draw. You can add your own specific line if you want to kind of that racial message and uh, or what your identity is and see how your identity has changed. Um, we didn't I you know, I didn't ask. What you know, what ethnicity is your wife? Yeah. She's did you want to know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So she's native in there. Okay. Well, she's so, biracial. Okay. So, so there, there's another aspect to it. Yeah. And and we could just ask you know, we could go down, you know, is, is Bella what's her ethnicity? What's Venus? Is, what's crazy? Yeah, you know, we can just keep going down that list and see if we can see any patterns here, because we tend to, you know, sometimes get with people who are very similar to our family, mm -hmm. and that's okay, mm -hmm. and that happens. So, and some people notice, you know, very stark patterns, and oh, I married my mom, yeah, which <laughs> and that's okay. But it, you know, that's why these are so interesting, and they're not like my family's crap. Right. Or my family is the greatest. It's just your family. Yeah. It's your view on your family. And the interesting thing is that you have to refer to the sisters 
they may come up with something that is very well, similar yeah. or that's totally different given mm -hmm. their perception and where we are. And what's really fun is that you can get the whole family there and get them to, you know, start talking about Uncle Bill's relationship with Uncle Mom Sally. You know, and then they start talking about the relationship and then they start processing the relationship. What happens is they go home and process relationships because you brought it up. Now, it may seem like, oh, we're just on a family thing. But in reality, you're opening up a whole can of worms here of, of relationships and of looking at things. Um, I had one one particular gentleman I did this with uh, came back the next session and said, because of that, I called my dad and I apologized for what a, for what a jerk I was to him all those years. It, it happened. It, yeah. but it, it, and it, it brings it out in such a way. I will invite you, because this is yours, and this is yep. the kind of first time you've done this. If you want, um, I ask clients to do this as well if you want. You can take a cell phone picture of it. Yep. That's the one way to put a cell phone. Yeah. Yep. You can take a picture of your life and save it. And, and you know, you can add to it if you want. So just kind of keep it as one that goes. Yep. Or study it for later. Yep. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to erase this. Yep. And if I have confidentiality, I don't want anybody else coming in my screen and doing what. Yep. Because it's so confidential. We have on video tape. Well, yeah. thank you. You sign, <laughs> you sign that piece of paper because I can ask you any questions. Right, 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 right. No, we're good. We're good. No, yeah, so we'll definitely do that. Yeah. And so to kind of wrap it up, the, the genogram as a tool can be very powerful. It brought up something for you that wasn't even on here, which right. was, you don't know, like wallowing in things. It's, I don't like that emotion. I'm going to fix it. Okay. Whereas I might say, experience it for a little bit. Yeah. And it's okay. Yeah. So that brought up other things. So the genogram is not just a family tree. It's much more than that. And it's the therapist's job to be attuned to that, be attuned to this, ask odd random questions, um, invite them to draw. I've had I've given the marker to lots of people and say, you know what? You do it. I I'll just ask questions if you go and ask. And they do, they will. They, as, as you saw, you corrected me. No, 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 that's not what yeah. And you got invested. Yeah. This is my family. Eric, you can't screw it up. Right. So they do get invested. And it's one of the great tools to do that. And that's why I like doing it. These are fun. To really get some um, doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. That was a lot of fun. Thank yeah. you for, Thanks for opening up. And yeah. <laughs> now, I just hope none of my family members see this because they don't know exactly what's wrong with Well, don't send that picture. <laughs> 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 All right. Thanks, man. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, thanks. So, uh, we will uh, actually we'll have Eric back. We'll do some, yes. some more training. Uh, this is the, the first in a number of series of trainings that we'll be doing. And uh, I want to say thank you so much for joining us. And uh, until next time, uh, be good to each other. Thanks a lot. All right. Bye. Bye.